Mount Calvary Baptist Church family and friends, and grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Lady Rose from the Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Mullica Hill, New Jersey. We are so delighted that you are joining us on today and we wish everyone a happy new year. We will start off today's service with a selection. to dedicate today's sermon to my stepson Atiba and Rose Jr. and to all of those who have lost a loved one during 2020. My prayer is that God will continually bless you, keep you, and wrap his loving arms around you. My condolences. God bless. Our scripture text for today will be coming from Acts 2 verses 1 to 8 and I'll be reading from the contemporary English version. And it reads, On the day of Pentecost, all the Lord's followers were together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from heaven like the sound of a mighty wind. 
It filled the house where they were meeting. Then they saw what looked like fiery tongues moving in all directions and a tongue came and settled on each person there. The Holy Spirit took control of everyone and they began speaking whatever languages the Spirit let them speak. Many religious Jews from every country in the world were living in Jerusalem. And when they heard this noise, a crowd gathered. But they were surprised because what they were hearing everything in their own languages. They were excited and amazed and said, Don't all of these who are speaking come from Galilee? Then why do we hear them speaking our very own languages? My topic for today is a new year. A new year. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come on this day with a grateful heart saying thank you. Thank you for life, for health and strength. Now, God, I pray that you just open up our hearts and our minds that we can receive a word from you on today, God. I pray that you would anoint me afresh, God, that you would give me focus, that your word would fall on fertile soil and come across with clarity. We thank you in your name. We pray. Amen. A new year. Today marks the third day of the first month of a new year. As you reflect upon the past year, what kind of year was it? A mile marker year or a forgettable year? A year of blessings or hardship? As I look back on 2020, I see a lot of heartache and pain and the death of my stepson and many transitions that came because of it. It has affected our lives in such a way that words can't express all that we are feeling from day to day. Yes, we know that God is in full control and not us, but as humans, we can't help but to feel the pain and the loss of someone you love so much, especially a child. But we know that 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, God cares for you, so turn all of your worries over to him. And this scripture we believe is so true and carried dearly in our hearts. Not only did my family have to deal with the loss of a loved one, but all of us had to deal with the COVID pandemic, the fight for social injustice, and how can we forget the election of 2020? But for us, it was also a year of God's incredible blessings and grace. And now we look forward to 2021 with much hope and great expectations. Amen. Amen. For many of us, we begin a new year that involves the forming of some new year resolutions. A recent study shared that two top new year resolutions revolved around the issues of finances and weight. In fact, a comedian once said that when they went to the gym at the first of the year, it was so packed they could hardly find an exercise machine. But wait two weeks later and the gym's crowd goes back to normal. You see, we are great at resolving, but we often fall short of keeping the things that we resolve to do or not to do. Today, I want to offer to you some New Year resolutions that you may want to consider for 2021 that if you keep it, it would dramatically impact, impact every aspect of your life, not just your money and your weight. So here we had the disciples. They too were faced with a new day. Their master Jesus had died. Their hopes were crushed. Their dreams were shattered. As per Jesus' instructions, they assembled in an upper room knowing what needed to be done, but lacking both the power and the desire to carry it out. It was here in their doubt that the Holy Spirit entered the picture. Listen again as I read Acts 2 verses 1 to 8. It is here where the Holy Spirit powerfully entered their lives and they became bold preachers of the gospel. Amen. Here we go. On the day of Pentecost, all the Lord's followers were together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from heaven like the sound of a mighty wind. It filled the house where they were meeting. Then they saw what looked like fiery tongues moving in all directions and a tongue came and settled on each person there. The Holy Spirit, hallelujah, took control of everyone and they began speaking whatever languages the Spirit let them speak. 
Many religious Jews from every country in the world were living in Jerusalem. And when they heard this noise, a crowd gathered, but they were surprised because they were hearing everything in their own languages. They were excited and amazed and said, don't all of these who are speaking come from Galilee? Then why do we hear them speaking our very own languages? Jesus spoke of this same Holy Spirit in John chapter 14, verse 26, when he said, But when the Father sends the counselor as my representative, and by the counselor I mean the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I myself have told you. So as you contemplate a New Year's resolution, we must do so, realizing that we cannot be successful in keeping it apart from God. John 15, five says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And the me here is clearly God. So you are not alone. Jesus said he will never leave us nor forsake us. Yes, at times we may feel all alone in pain, just playing on hurting and feel like no one cares and no one is there to support you. But God is there. He cares for you and he will see you through. Amen? Amen. With these thoughts in mind, I would like to offer to you some good resolutions to consider. First, find time for God. Build that personal relationship with Christ. In the course of each day, make time creatively to spend with Christ. If you want something to happen, just write it down. Put it in an active calendar and guess what the odds of it happening just increased. Look at your day. Where in the day can you make an appointment to spend with Jesus? Then right under that time slot in your calendar, Jesus. Invite Jesus to meet you. In this time, you can read your Bible, you can read an inspirational magazine or book, you can pray, sing, walk, journal, or whatever you like to share with him. How boring are our friendships when we say and do the same things every time we're together? Also, start with short amounts of time. Use the exercise principle. If you spend an hour exercising in the beginning, you may be too sore to exercise the next day. I'm a witness here. So you need to pace yourself. Jesus would rather meet with you one minute a day than 20 minutes one day a year. As you build that relationship, you will learn to hear the voice of God through the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will then personally convict, guide, rebuke, teach, cancel, and comfort you. And when that happens, your relationship will deepen with God and you will grow. Second, choose to in 2021 to truly make Jesus Lord of your life by sacrificing your money, your time, and your talents for his plan and his ways. In 2021, what areas of your life are not turned over to him? You see, the rich young ruler came to Jesus. He asked him what he needed to know in order to inherit, inherit eternal life. Jesus, after a little exchange, said, sell all you have and give it to the poor. The man walked away because he could not give it all away. So here's my question for you today. Are you holding on so tightly that you are missing your opportunity to be blessed? Thirdly is, in the midst of the hardships and trials that may come in 2021, choose to lean hard on Jesus. Sometimes when the hard times comes, we are like the hunters in this story. There was a story told of two hunters who came across a bear so big that they dropped their rifles and they ran for cover. One man climbed a tree while the other hid in a nearby cave. The bear was so was so the bear was not in no hurry to eat. So we sat down between the tree and the cave to reflect upon his good fortune. Suddenly, and for no apparent reason, the hunter in the cave came rushing out and almost ran into the waiting bear, hesitated, and then dashed back into the cave again. 
The same thing happened a second time. Then he emerged for the third time. His companion in the tree frantically called out, Woody, are you crazy? Stay in the cave till he leaves. Can't, panted Woody. There's another bear in there. Do you ever feel like the hunter in the cave? Like every time you turn around, there is another problem just waiting for you? No matter what you do, you just can't escape your troubles? Well, I know how that hunter feels because over the past couple of months, I felt like the hunter in the cave. On Thanksgiving evening of last year, my stepson suddenly died from a bullet wound. That night, at that very moment, our lives suddenly changed forever. I can still hear the loud squeal that my husband let out when the doctor told my husband, I am so sorry to tell you this, but your son has passed. What is so unbelievable to me is that we were all so happy that day. We ate Thanksgiving dinner together earlier, and as he left out of the door, he turned around and looked at us and he said, I love you guys, and that was that. And at that next moment, he was gone. We still can't wrap our heads around what happened. We still can't believe that he is not here with us. It's, it's like a dream that we can't wake up from. So I encourage you during this new year to cherish your loved ones and let them know every day that you love them. There are so many things that I wished I said and I did that I can't change. So you need to live on purpose each day. Amen. But we can rest assured that he is with the Lord and that is where we find our comfort even though it hurts so bad. Even when we think life is so unfair. While all of this was happening, many changes were happening in our country that brought on new challenges on top of the changes in our lives. And then at the same time, our life became very more challenging. Yeah, we know that life happens and when we face these times, we often want to quit. We want to give up. We want to lock ourselves away. We want to just pull the covers over our heads and just stop. But life happens to us all. But those who have a relationship with Jesus Christ have divine strength and unsurpassing peace that the unbeliever does not have. It is here where the power of our testimony draws other people to an awesome Savior. Amen. I know things aren't perfect and I know that it may have been rough in 2020, but we must give God some praise. So as you enter into this new year, we have to give him some praise because he allowed us to see a new year. We have to give him some praise because he is the living word of God. We have to give him some praise because he is the lamb of God. He is the only begotten son of God. He is the savior of the world, the great physician, the bread of life, the water of life, our great redeemer, the great shepherd, the resurrection and the life. He is the way, he is the truth and the life. He is the giver of the Holy Spirit and he is the true vine. He is our savior, Jesus Christ, and he is worthy of all the praise. He is worthy of all the praise. No matter how we feel, he is a worthy, amen. Amen. And I'm done, but I just want to leave you with this story. A man's daughter had asked the local minister to come and pray with her father. When the minister arrived, he found the man lying in bed with his head propped up on two pillows. An empty chair sat beside his bed. The minister assumed that the old fella had been informed of his visit. I guess you were expecting me, he said. No, who are you? said the father. The minister told him his name and then remarked, I see an empty chair, so I figured you knew I was going to show up. Oh yeah, the chair, said the bedridden man. Oh, would you just close the door for me if you don't mind? Puzzled, the minister shut the door. I have never told anyone this, not even my daughter, said the man, but all of my life, I never knew how to pray. At church, I used to hear the pastor talk about prayer, but it went right over my head. 
I abandoned any attempt at prayer, the old man continued, until one day, four years ago, my best friend said to me, Johnny, prayer is just a simple matter of having a conversation with Jesus. Here is what I suggest. Sit down in a chair, place an empty chair in front of you, and in faith, see Jesus in the chair. It's not spooky because he said, I will be with you always. Just then, just speak to him in the same way you're doing with me right now. So I tried it and I liked it so much that I did it a couple of hours every day. I'm careful though. If my daughter saw me talking to a chair, she'll either have a nervous breakdown or send me off to a funny farm. The minister was deeply moved by the story and he encouraged the old man to continue on the journey. Then he prayed with him, anointed him with oil and returned to the church. Two nights later, the daughter called to tell the minister that her daddy had died that afternoon. Did he die in peace? He asked. Yes, when I left the house about two o'clock, he called me over to his bedside. He told me he loved me and he kissed me on the cheek. When I got back home from the store an hour later, I found him dead. But there was something strange about his death. Apparently, Jesus, apparently just before daddy died, he leaned over and rested his head on the chair beside the bed. What do you make of that? The minister wiped a tear from his eye and said, I wish we all could go like that. So I wonder this day, how many of us just need to rest our heads on his chair and trust that he knows and he will make a way. Amen. As I close, listen to this poem entitled The New Year. I am the new year. I am an unspoiled page in your book of time. I am your next chance at the art of living. I am your opportunity to practice what you have learned about life during the last 12 months. All that you sought and didn't find is hidden in me, waiting for you to search it, but with more determination. All the good that you tried for and didn't achieve is mine to grant when you have fewer conflicting desires. All that you dream but didn't dare to do, all that you hope but did not will, all the faith that you've claimed but did not have, these slumber lightly, waiting to be awakened by the touch of a strong purpose. I am your opportunity to renew your allegiance to him who said, behold, I make all things new. And if you are watching on today and you don't know Jesus, he can make all things new if you just trust and believe in him. So if you are out there today and you want to accept Jesus as your personal savior, this is your day. If you want to receive Jesus in your life today, all you need to do is just repeat after me. Jesus, I accept you into my heart. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I confess that I am a sinner saved by grace and that you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And if you believe that in your heart, you are saved. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year. Make the godly best of it. God bless you. We would now like to encourage Mount Calvary members to send in their tithes and offerings. And if you would like to support us in giving, please go to our website at www.mcbcmh.org and click the donate tab. You will also find on our website our weekly schedule. We would also like to hear from you. Maybe you're interested in a membership or just a prayer request. You can email us at mountcalvarymh at yahoo.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and our website. We hope you have been blessed. God bless you.